Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish. Welcome, or welcome back, to Arcanum of Steamworks, and Magic Obscura, and the continuing Curious Cases of Dr. B. Unni Esquire, as she tries to save the world, etc. When last we left off, we were here in Kintara, the secret, hidden, nigh-mythical capital city of the elves in the middle of the glimmering forest. And uh, some stuff was going on. For example, there was a murder. So, Wrath got deaded. And we've got to figure out who did it. Now, right now, of course, as far as we're aware, Sharp did it. The alchemist, who is not currently here. Ivory here. His partner. Doesn't think it was him. Now, there are two paths. I don't remember if I said this last time when we were investigating the murder. There are two paths that you can take uh, to identify Wrath's killer. A one of them is in this vase, but the problem is, yeah, see, the it's it's locked. And if you pick it, it does not matter what her reaction towards you is. Uh, she, uh, it drops to zero and she attacks you. And I don't know if there's a way to change that. And here's the thing. This is what sucks, kind of. <laughs> She's facing away, so she does not know that we are trying to open this, right? She doesn't react to it. But if you pick it successfully, then she gets mad and she notices. Also, if you go into prowling mode to be stealthy, she turns to face you no matter what. And follow you around. And I don't think that there's any way around that. So... I've tried a couple different things because I wanted to show the other... Um, uh, the other version of the quest, which... I, th the other one gives you a fate point if you go through this. There is evidence in this pot uh, that implies that Wrath actually poisoned himself to frame Sharp. Because he was that much of a bastard, apparently. So, uh, we may just be stuck, because I... Well, that's alright. That's a shame, but it's, it's fine. Because we could have gotten a fate point for it. And I don't know that there's any other way. Maybe if we were invisible, perhaps, we could do it. Well, for now, first things first. Let's head to Falcon's Ache, where Raven has asked us to remove some humans, but we cannot under any circumstances shed blood. All of these monsters or animals, they won't attack us. Oh, there's also one of the, uh, this is another one of the altars here. We found almost all of them, so we're going to have to do that soon. All right. Happy to make your acquaintance. Hello, sir, and who are you? I'm William Bench, outdoorsman and naturalist, head of this bunch you see here. And who may you be? I am Dr. B. Unni Esquire. A pleasure. May I speak with you? Certainly. Uh, what are you doing here? I'm a surveyor, and this is my team. We're employed by the Toringsdale Logging Company. We've a contract to map out the surrounding lands, which were recently purchased by Toringsdale, and report the usability of its resources. Fairly standard job, really. Hmm. We may have a problem here, Mr. Bench. Oh, really? And what might that be? Unfortunately, you're not supposed to be here. 
I see no problem here, stranger. In fact, I think I'm going to have to ask you to leave. This here is private property, and you're trespassing. He motions to a few of his cronies who eye us suspiciously. Hmm. So there's a couple ways this quest could go as well. Um, I will show you both of them. If we say, I think I'll be able to persuade you otherwise. He says, really? Listen, friend. I'm here to do a job. William Bench is a man of his word, and Toringsdale expects a report on his desk in a week. I don't think there's much you're going to be able to say that'll dissuade me from doing what I'm here to do. Uh, I... you might think differently if you knew who I represent. Who you represent? I see, let me guess. You're one of the blokes from Wexdale Lumber, right? Wait, I see it all now. You're here to tell me you have legal rights to this land. Uh, <laughs> so you have to say this one. Let me move out of the trees there. You're half correct, but I'm not here from Wextel Lumber. Oh, who then? Gilbert Bates. I represent Gilbert Bates. Bates? Bates? What interest would Gilbert Bates have in logging? The man supplies the engines for our clear cutters. Uh, this is his land. Your map must be incorrect. Hmm. Incorrect? I'm a surveyor, Dr. Honey. It's my job to be correct in matters like knowing exactly where I am. Now, who are you really and what's your business here? As I said, I represent Bates. He's getting into logging. Ahem. <clears throat> there we go. Mr. Bates? In the logging business? But he owns so much already. Why would someone with such an obvious monopoly in his field of expertise want to take over logging as well? He sees an opportunity. Are you going to question him? Uh, no. No, of course not. I'm not saying I'd question Mr. Bates' judgment, but what exactly are you doing here? I mean, this land is owned by Toringsdale. Well, Mr. Bates is contesting that in court as we speak. In court? I have legal documents here stating the validity of the Toringsdale claim. How could Mr. Bates contest this? Uh, do you really think that legality is a concern of Mr. Bates? No, I see your point. But what exactly are you proposing? I've still a job to do, but I'm not one to make the wrong sort of enemies. Maybe Mr. Bates is looking to do some business here? Hmm. I recommend you just disappear, Mr. Bench. <laughs> disappear? Are you threatening me? I have re representation in the unions. Now, I know that Mr. Bates is powerful, but even he can't run his factories without workers. One bad word for me and his business grinds to a halt. What do you say to that? That's probably not true at all. Why don't I just put in a good word for you with Bates? Oh. Oh. I don't know if maybe... Well, you can convince them to leave. Is the thing. I may have chosen things in the wrong order. You have to do it very specifically. Da -da -da, uh huh. Uh. Not from uh, Gilbert Bates. He's thinking of getting into the logging business. Sees an opportunity. Contesting it in court. Perhaps I could put in a good word for you. There we go. Yeah, it's because I just chose the other one. He winks. <laughs> That, my friend, would be very much appreciated. I'm thinking our little party here might have fallen into some difficulties. You know, hazards of the trade, perhaps a violent storm. And since we'd lost all of the provisions... You had to go back early. Very nice, William. Thank you, Dr. Honey. I was always a good storyteller. And you'll make sure to pass on my name to Mr. Bates. He'll be in need of surveyors as well. I'll say that you can always lie to... I mean, rely on Mr. Bench. Right, we'll get packed away and leave. I look forward to hearing from you soon. There they go, and they despawn. And they leave this chest behind. Now, so that is one way. But remember, we were specifically told uh, not to shed blood. So, we're not going to. 
This is the other way that you can do it. Don't need to go that far, probably. Let's see, is it? No. Sure. I'll do it right away. Sure. I'll Spit do it out. right away. Sure. I'll do it right away. What? I'll do no such thing. What? I'll what? do no such thing. I'm telling him to move over here. What? I'll do no <laughs> such thing. No idea why they're so upset about it. Sure. Which one I'll is? Do it right. sure. That's back I'll off. Do it there right we go. Away. I don't want them to get into a fight. You see? Oh, they're gonna follow me anyway. Um, this is Elven Holy Ground. Your presence here is a travesty. He looks around, smirking. I don't see any signs here naming the place as such. Damn bleeding hard elves, always trying to save the forests. We're here on solid legal grounds. If the elves have a problem with it, they can bring their complaints to the courts. These are new times, and people are just going to have to live in them. Oh, buddy. I don't think you understand. No, friend, you don't understand. Move along, or I may be forced to take action. Now leave us be. Ahem. <laughs> Said, friend, I'm not going to talk about this anymore. I want you out of here right now. Huh. As if I take orders from a mongrel like you. What, you're insulting me now? You're trying my patience. Hmm. Your blabberings make me sick. Have some dignity, man. Dignity? I'll not be spoken to like that in front of my men. I suggest you apologize, madam. Apologize? <laughs> I'd sooner kiss a baboon's arse. You... I'd watch my tongue if I were you, stranger. There's only so much abuse a man can take. Oh, so you've nothing to worry about being as you are. Shut up. Shut up. I won't be held responsible for my actions if this continues. I've seen tougher barmaids. Go ahead. I dare you to hit me. That's it. You're asking for it. Let's get her, man. Now, I'm just going to do nothing on this turn. No, don't do anything. God, you're not supposed to do it. There we go. Well, it's fine. They they struck first, so it's fine. There you go. The spirits just up and kill them. If you provoke them to uh, attack first. So I don't think we need anything from them. And uh, since they are assholes... I think that's probably the way we're going to leave it. It's what they deserve. Now, let's see here. Try harder, Virgil. I believe in you. There we go. 150 gold. Not too shabby. I don't know why I have to... <laughs> Look, you don't actually have to go up here. Okay, so... Let's go ahead and... Head back to Kintara. Let me in. There we go. Okay, uh, this way. I need to tell Raven that it is done. Hello again. It's so very good to see you. Hello, Raven. Do you have a moment to speak? Certainly. How can I help you? I have removed the humans from Falcon's Ache. Thank you very much. Your help in the matter is much appreciated. Now, what was it you needed to speak to my mother about? It's a long story, Raven. A dark tale full of pain. And it would seem that the blame lies with us, the elves. There are elves involved. Do you know the name of Mingorad? I do not, and none of the elves who live here bear it. But it bothers me very much, pulls darkly at my heart and mind. There is another possibility... One I'd rather not think of. What, Raven? Do you know where I might find Mingarad? No. You need to speak with my mother of these things. She will know what to do. All right. 
Where might I find her? She's just beyond the large door behind me. But be warned, my mother is a magical being of great power. Her spirit swims in the flow, and sometimes she is more of that world than this one. What she sees is not always what we see, so her answers might seem strange to you. Ask what you wish to know, and listen. When you're through speaking with her, come and find me. I will, Raven. Thank you for your help. Okay. Here we go. The Silver Lady. Hello. I welcome you, Traveler. Greetings to you, Silver Lady. I thank you for this audience. I know you've come far, and I've expected you for a long time now. What do you mean? I've seen you approaching from both east and west, Traveler. And you bring them with you, all of them. They've no choice but to follow. Please, I don't understand. I know, I know. We speak different languages, you and I. The things I see, wrapped in the past and the present, and shrouded in the veils of magic. I cannot translate my visions into your own. You must listen, Traveler. Listen and learn to see. I will try, Silver Lady. What is it you see, Traveler? Well, first of all, do you know if I'm the Living One? The Living One? <laughs> oh, Traveler, why would you think I would know of such a thing? It's a prophecy. I assume you can see what is to come. <laughs> it's an interesting thing about prophecies, Traveler. They're no clearer to one such as myself, living both in and out of the stream, than they are to you, walking the shore. The flow swirls around them, until they are ready. And in the end, really, is it going to matter who someone pointed a finger at? That would be comforting if people weren't trying to kill me. These people can only see what follows in your wake, Traveler. Pass your hand through the flame and it flickers. If you've tired of the mantle, then shed it. Disappear. Otherwise, don't be surprised at what people do. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen, she says. You've a point there. And the Black Mountain Clan. Yes, I can see them. But the ravens are circling, and the storm rages but subsides. And yet there is lightning, and then shadow, and then the storm howls again, tearing. I can't even look at it. That makes no sense to me. Wait. Oh. Look, they've taken in a small child with machine dreams and hands of hinged metal and a heart in which Kong burns brightly. That's Gilbert Bates. That was in the past. I don't know on what you speak, Traveler. Please, listen. Try to hear with my ears. I don't know if I can. I see a flame atop a hill, burning so brightly. And below, a field of wheat around a pool of water. And the flame spitting fire and consuming the wheat and the lake and losing itself as well. Is there anything else? The clan, do you see anything else? It's dark here. So dark. And the flame is here too. But... This flame burns black onyx and cold, and shadow is its child. Are they here as well? I can't see that far. What else? A plane of mirrored glass, a sky of white, a lone figure. Wait, which is the reflection? I'm unsure. You're speaking in riddles, Silver Lady. That is all I see, Traveler. The riddle is created by you. Do you have anything else you'd like to ask? Min Garad, 
What can you tell me of that name? Mingorod, an old name traveler. Oh, a man is screaming and carves a key with his fingers, and the birds have plucked his eyes out. And the wolf watches, motionless, his paw in the air. Is it Mingorod? Is he dead? And what does the wolf mean? A tear in the curtain, and only darkness beyond. A ragged wound, mended with a ring of blasted stone. What else? What else do you see of Mingorod? A hand that sees, but is blinded. A man draped in truth, wearing a mask. You've lost me. Please. And they hide. The lost children, they hide. A gray mist, even to me. But there, he runs, dropping veined and painted leaves. And the flock comes, talons outstretched, and wings of fire, and he is consumed. But the leaves... What? Run quickly, traveler. Find what was left behind. In the place of smoke and water, he is there. He is there. Who? Mingorod? I see no more. The stream is again calm. Was there anything else? No. But I understand almost none of what you said. I know that, traveler. But I also know that clarity is often the child of time. Your answers lie both in front and behind. Make sure not to overlook one for the other. Characteristically cryptic, dear lady. <laughs> I go now, traveler. We will meet again, though I'm not sure on which side. No matter. Farewell. Well. That conversation's always fun. So. There we go. We've done that. Let's check our notes and see what Dr. Unny thinks of these riddles. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spoke with the Silver Lady and asked her about Mingarad. She had many visions, all of which were cryptic and unclear. Indeed, they were. That's all right. Hello again. It's so very good to see you. Hello, Raven. Do you have a moment to speak? Certainly. How can I help you? I've spoken with your mother about what has happened. And what did you ask her about? I asked her about the Black Mountain Clan. Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? Hmm. She saw ravens and lightning and a violent storm. Ravens and a storm? And why did the storm subside and then rage once again? Nothing in my mother's visions is ever what it seems. We'll have to think on this. Black Mountain Clan. See, as uh. you told her, this must have been the man you know as Gilbert Bates. She saw him because he plays such a large role in their fate. Right. Black Mountain Clan. What did she see? A flame that consumed a wheat field and a pool of water. I'm not sure what that represents, but I know that fire in her visions often represents magic. And the water you say quenched it? Or did the flame burn itself out? Black Mountain Clan. And climb. finally... What did she see? A dark place with a dark fire and a mirrored plane. There are two separate visions. The flame again represents magic, but twisted somehow, burning darkly. And did you say that the Black Mountain Clan was near this flame? The mirrored plane, a white sky, a lone figure. The worlds on either side of that mirror are the same. Who could say which one is real? Odd. Mm, she looks at us strangely. She also had visions of Mingorod. Mingorod? What did she see? An eyeless man in pain, carving a key. A wolf with raised paw. What the screaming man and his key represent, I have no idea. But I do know that the official symbol for the city of Caledon is a wolf, with one paw raised in the air. Perhaps we need to begin our search there, Raven. I'm not so sure. Remember, my mother's visions are shackled by neither our eyes nor our time. The events she describes might be in either the future or the past. Let's look at all she said before we go any further. 
Wise words. Ningarad. What did she see? A torn curtain. A ringed, broken finger pointing east. There's something about that entire vision which pulls at my memory. Especially the ring. I'll think about it further. Ningarad. Okay. What did she see? A hand that sees but is blind. A truthful man in a mask. I have no idea. Wait. Ah, now we know something they don't know. That sounds like the symbol on an amulet I've seen. Interesting. That's the ancient symbol of the Malokian Hand. Do you know of it? Yes, I know they were an ancient order of assassins. The Malokian Hand were assassins for what used to be known as the Darian Ka, the ancient order of the dead. Hmm. Magnus Shalefist mentioned something of them. The Darian Ka were a shadowy group who <laughs> like he's formed not standing during the there. Age of Legends. Their membership and their agenda were always very secret. I know little about them beyond the most cursory knowledge, but there have always been rumors about who they were and what they were doing. And their connection to the Malokian Hand? As I said, the Malokian Hand were their assassins. From what I remember of what was written about them, the Hand was ejected from the Order of the Dead on grounds of doctrinal differences. There was a small struggle, and then the Hand disappeared. There are always rumors of its re-emergence, but from what I know, that's all they are. Rumors. These amulets and the attempts on my life say different. I agree. But I don't know why they would be involved in this business. Very interesting. What do you think the vision itself means? I don't really know. Although it would seem that perhaps they are being misled. Blindness in my mother's visions is sometimes associated with deception. As far as the man in the mask was draped in truth, I have no idea. Hmm, Mingarad, interesting. What did she see? Lost, hiding children. A man runs from them and drops leaves. This one is the most interesting of all, and it seems that my fears may have well been correct. Why, Raven? What do you think it means? Do you remember when I told you that the name of Mingarad bothered me in some way? Well, I believe that may have been so because Mingarad is a dark name. What does that mean? A dark name? A dark elf name. Do you know of the dark elves? I've heard very little of them. Could you elaborate? It's a long story. But sometime during the Age of Legends, many years even before my mother was born, there were a group of elves who separated themselves. There were philosophical differences, and they were no longer welcome in our forests. Those elves became what we know as the Dark Elves. What is the Age of Legends? The Age of Legends refers to a time in Arcanum's history when things were much different than they are now. There was an elven council that ruled over all of the races, and magic was a large part of everyone's lives. It was a time of heroes and great good, and also of great evil. A time before the rise of technology, before the Dwarven Clan Wars, before the mages left for Tula. I see. And the differences between you and the Dark Elves? They believe that this world and all of its races are subject to elven rule. They believe that elves are superior because of our close connection to nature, our power in the ways of magic, and the longevity of our physical form. They see the other races as bumbling children who need our guidance, regardless of its severity. And you? What do you believe? I believe... Well, let us say that I don't always see eye to eye with those in Kintara concerning the rightful place of the Dark Elves. My role here is as protector. I will do so regardless of the cost. What do the elves here believe? The elves of Kintara, in fact all other elves, believe that everything and everyone has a rightful place in the experience which forms this reality. Elves feel that very little, if anything, ever happens that isn't part of the natural progression of that state. They feel no superiority because of their advantages. That is just the role they have been picked to play. Do they see the Dark Elves as a violation of that order? Unfortunately not. The Dark Elves are seen in the same light as everyone else. They have the role, and they are playing it. Hmm. I see. Let's get back to your mother's vision. My mother's vision of the lost children was referring, I believe, to the Dark Elves. They were hidden from her because they are hidden from all of us. Through magic and isolation, we've not seen where they live for almost 500 years. But... Who was the man running from them? 
There was a man many years ago who had come to the Glimmering Forest to study the elves, and I remember that he was very interested in the Dark Elves especially. There were rumors about his capture by them and an escape. Who was he? As I said, he was a researcher. A strange little man, a bit overdressed, but kind-hearted and very intelligent. I was young then, a mere 160 years old. He was the first human I'd ever seen. Do you remember his name? His name? It was a long time ago. But I remember because he said it so often. I think humans just like hearing the sound of their own names. <laughs> Terwilliger. Dr. Renford A. Terwilliger. I can hear him saying it even now. <laughs> what is the place of smoke and water? She could mean almost anywhere. But if I were to make a guess, I'd say she was talking about the human city of Tarant. It lies in the Gulf of Morbihan, and it's... What do you call them? Factories? Are always belching smoke into the skies. That and... I know that Terwilliger was from there. What were the leaves he was dropping? I don't know. It almost seemed in the vision that the flock who consumed him were more interested in the leaves. And my mother even said to find what was left behind, these leaves might very well be what we're looking for. I've made an interesting connection between the visions. What is it you've seen? In many of the visions, there were flocks of birds. Yes. I think that they always represent the Dark Elves. Interesting. It does paint an interesting picture, and it might change the way we think about some of them. The ravens circling the storm, the man who had his eyes plucked out by the birds, and now this man dropping leaves. Interesting. Well, what now? You have a place to begin your search, my friend. It would seem that if you need to find this Mingarod, you're going to need to find the village of the Dark Elves. The only person who might know where they are is Renford A. Terwilliger. He may or may not be in Tarant, but it's a good place to start looking. Then, I will find the Dark Elves. To Tarant, I shall go. You impress me, my friend. Few are those like you who would take this burden upon themselves. You've earned my respect. <laughs> so, there's a, a couple of options here. There's just the, uh, whatever, would you mind letting go of my hand so I can go? Which is very funny. Uh, your respect makes it all the more worth it. Or, I'm no hero, I just want people to stop trying to kill me. <laughs> Which is also funny in its own way. Um, but... Uh, there are some limited sort of romance options in Arcanum. That's not something that has come up before now. Um, I say sort of romance options because I wouldn't consider it a full classical CRPG romance. Uh, you know, the way that you can in games like, uh, you know, Baldur's Gate or um, Planescape Torment. You know, things like that, where you actually can develop a relationship over time with a character and then you wind up officially together, like explicitly you are a couple at the end of it. Um, I don't, that doesn't really happen here, like all the way, uh, but you can kind of get close to Raven. Your respect makes it all the more worth it. There are strong bonds between women such as we. Good mm. luck. Return to me when you found the Dark Elves, and tell me what you've uncovered. <laughs> there are strong bonds between women, such as we. What's better than this? Gals being pals. Ah, <laughs> uh, I'll return when I know more. Goodbye. Indeed. So now, now we've got stuff to do. Okay, yes, Terwilliger. Now, of course, she was young when she knew Terwilliger, so probably. She's like, he might be in Toronto. It's like, no, he's probably been dead for a while. <laughs> it's true. I've, I've got to get around to Planescape at some point. It's such a good game, but there's so much of it. And it's one of those where it's really difficult I feel not to try and pursue because it's a very heavy role-playing focused game uh, so it's it's very hard not to attempt to pursue everything um, that you can 
like every little nook and cranny in the game, you've got to explore it because that's what it's for. You know, it's Planescape. You, you've got to. Yeah, exactly. It would take a long time. It would be up there with Baldur's Gate. Very much so. Okay, well, let's go. Oh, the Stonecutter Clan. Actually, we need to stop there on the way. We can complete a quest as we go past. It's not too far off the path. So yes, this is where the game gets really interesting. Oh, Lord. There, I helped. <laughs> Man, this goes so much faster now. I'm about to level up, too. Nice. Hello to the Stonecutter Clan. Welcome. Oh. Oh no, what's what's this we see? Hmm. Putrid walkers, remember them? It's been a while, but I'm much less scared of them now. What's in here? Yeah, yeah. Quality axe. Ooh, dwarven ore. Never know when we might need some of that. How can I help you? Oh wait, right, 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 right. He's full. There we go. Much better. Let's see. He's level 16. I'm waiting for his strength to go up. So we can give him that axe. Hello? Clues? Machined hammer. Oh, I wonder if that's better than his axe. 3 to 9 damage, 3 to 12 fatigue, speed 8. How can I help you? No. This one does more damage and about the same fatigue at the same speed, so. And there's the level. All right. Okay, well, let's see. If I remember correctly, I think we are putting points in intelligence. Yes. Yeah, because we've got to get 17 before we can upgrade any more of our disciplines, really. Wow, our good alignment is down to 88. I wonder why. It'll go back up. Oh my goodness. Virgil, I believe in you. Hey, see? You really can do anything if you try hard and believe in yourself. There's a passage on the other side is why it's so difficult to get through there. Old gears, more dwarven ore, mithril sheet. I'm just going to leave that. We have a bunch of mithril anyway. Probably more than we need. In fact, actually, I just realized I need to use some of that up. Think there's anything in here? No. Okay. So let's see here. Uh, real quick. 
Okay. Bronwick's gun, you need 40 gunsmithing. We should be able to pull that off with those books. I think that's the only thing that we needed. How can I help you? The mithril four. Okay, so let's see. Source gem. Move this over here. That. And Ooh. this one and this one. I have to do this. Aha! There we go. Okay, now that should give us 34 gunsmithing. Oh. Not quite enough. Dang it. Okay, How can well, I, help you? I thought I could make some space for us, but that's all right. What do you mean there's no room for that item? It's four by three. What in the world? How can I help you? What? Okay, let's let's try it this way. I guess. There. Now. There. What in the world was that all about? Who knows? Okay. You may have noticed the uh, bonus that we get from those books goes up when we increase our intelligence. So each book that we have gives us a bonus equal to our intelligence while it's in our inventory. Um, so I'm getting 34 for having two books because our intelligence is 17. So when we max our intelligence out at 20, those two books will give us 40 skill, which is enough to make the gun. Oh, I literally did not see you. Oh, a geode. Our rock collection grows. <laughs> God, this weapon's so good. And so funny. Okay, now we'll actually need some assistance. Probably. Get you a bite, doggo. Good boy. This has significantly less range than our boomerang, but who cares is kind of the uh, the response to that. Okay, let's go around this way first, actually. Is this... Okay, it is a dead end. I wasn't sure. Oh, another geode. Okay, well, these Black Defiler slaves, all quite nasty. This is the Black Defiler. You gotta go first. They're actually quite tough. You can see our experience bar jumping up. How? 
dare you? Oh, he dodged it. Good boy. Okay. I'm, you, I will deal with personally. Finish them. Nice. Very nice. I don't think any of these carry anything. He might. Nope. Okay. So as you can see, something terrible has happened here. But not as terrible as you might think. Before we do that, though. There's one passage we did not go to. Pathfinding. What is it? We just don't know. And you've got me thinking about Planescape Torment now. I kind of wish that was next on the list. It would be a good one to do after this because I'm in the mood. On the other hand, I don't know if it would be great to watch after this one. Because it's not that they're too similar, but they are similar. And uh, then, of course, there is the question of length. Hey, first try, Virgil. All right. Everybody give it up for Virgil. My guy. Yup. First try. Aha. And here we go. Here's the real nastiness. Bludgeoner. These are just putrid walkers. Need to focus on these guys. Oh, nice. Our dog is dodging all over the place. Oh, good. He got knocked down. Doesn't mean too much in turn-based mode, but... Hey. All right. So you can probably see the story sort of unfolding here. think there's anything else in here? Yeah, I think that that's it. So see, they were like, the Stonecutter clan were digging a tunnel, and they broke into an ancient tomb. A tomb full of the bad. So, of course, when they opened it up, the bad got out. But that's all right. The scariest thing in these tunnels is uh, is our doggo. And he's on our side. Goodness gracious, what a good boy. And not one of them dropped a key. All right, Virgil, time to shine again. Watch him jam this one. Hey, no, there we go. Go. Dwarf technologist, dwarf villager, dwarf guard. Villager guard. I think he's the leader. Thank Alberic, you found us. We were liable to starve in there. Damn zombies. You made short work of them, though. Hey. Um, what happened here? Yes, dwarves digging too greedily and too deep perish the thought. There are things older and more terrible in the depths than you can imagine. Oh, man. He chuckles softly and looks at his shoes a bit sheepishly. I would be uh, responsible for all this. I found an ancient necromancer's laboratory off an old abandoned access cavern. In researching his journals, I deduced a way to reproduce what he'd done through magic by using scientific principles. Wait, so you created all these zombies? That was a bit irresponsible. I assure you it was an accident. 
The first one I created began an awful, horrific screeching and flailing about. It knocked over my chemicals, and before I knew what was happening, they were coming out of the floor. They were everywhere! Luckily, I was able to get back here to warn everyone. Where is this laboratory? We know. You've got to go through the door in the back of the storage room off the main hall to get to the old tunnel that leads to it. But I'd be careful if you're planning on going there. And he hands us a key. <laughs> it's the key that opens the second door that we picked back there. <laughs> I'm looking for Erland Ironheart. Do you know him? Well, of course I know him. I'm him. Oh. Well, your brother sent me to ask you to go home. Oh, Thrain. Poor Thrain. He's been so overprotective of me since our father died. He blames himself for it, you know. What happened to your father? I'd rather not speak of it anymore. I'd best be on my way home so that my dear brother doesn't worry himself to death. Indeed. So we got a key that we don't need and won't use. Uh, there we go. Finish that. Now, of course, we need to go back to Thrain to uh, like get our reward for that. But that does complete the quest. So that's a fun little aside. Hello? Goodness, Magnus, what were you doing back there? He's got too big of a load because his strength score is still not that great. How can I help you? What would you like me to do? How can I help you? Uh, what do you... Here we go. Okay, it did go up. It did go up. It's 11. That's great. Good. Hopefully we'll go up again soon. If it goes up to at least 12, then we can give him Harrow. I think it's 12. Right. Oh! No, it's 10, actually. In that case, you? you should be able to use it. Wait, let me do this. Magnus, 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 please. Please, Magnus. There. Okay, now that's weird. See, I thought it was 12. So now, why is it 12 for him, but 10 for us? That's odd. Also, where are we standing? I think I dropped a railroad spike. He, he probably picked it up. It's fine. Okay. On to Tarant. It's been a hot five minutes since we were there. Oh, Lord. You really... Okay. Sick of y'all. They are worth quite a bit of XP, though. That's the way... I may wind up level grinding to finish out this build. I don't know. We'll see. Because just by playing the game in the course of things, you can get to level 50 fairly easily, as you can see, because we are already level 42, going on level 43. Um, oh, and our alignment has recovered somewhat as well. Good. Uh, but, of course, our uh, level cap has increased thanks to the mod that I'm using. I would love to take advantage of that. Um, I need to go to the university, but is there anything first, anything else that we should do? 
What is it that you want of me? Is there anything we need to trade or get rid of? You know what? The filament sword suit. One to eight plus... Right. His AC is really good. I think we can probably, since we can buy more of these anyway, um, we can probably get rid of the Sword of Defense now. We need to unload all of these damn gems is what we need to do. Ugh. Okay, well, one thing at a time, I suppose. Wrong way. We'll just walk because the weapon shop is on the way to the university if we go in this direction. I wonder, actually, if they've got a... Okay, we'll have to wait until morning anyhow, but... There we go. I'm, I'm wondering, actually, if maybe they'll have a um, scroll of invisibility or something. Because our technology aptitude is 67 for some reason. It was 77. I don't know what would have made it go down. Who is Renfred A. Terwilliger? Heard of that name. I believe he died a tragic death or some such. He has a nice headstone over at the cemetery. Ooh. Remember? Celebrated professor dies in mysterious circumstances or whatever. Um, let us barter. Will you buy this? No. The guy next door will. His husband will buy it. Is this red barbarian clothes. I don't think there's anything else that we need. Dorianium Faded Ring. Okay, so let's see. Divine Magic, Sucker Beast, Exiting, Tempest Fugit. Well, really? A Scroll of Tempest Fugit? Huh. Resurrect, Call Water Elemental, Body of Stone, Flash, Divine Magic, Divine Magic, Resurrect, Resurrect, Exiting. Dang. That's all right. The inventory of, of the shops kind of scales with you, so as we level up, they're going to have better stuff like that. And we'll be able to... Uh... We'll be able to come back and get something. Bow of Terror makes enemies run away. We don't want them to do that. A vest of visibility. <laughs> Indeed. Okay, I don't think that we need anything else here. Uh, oh, university's back this way. But, in fact, where is the cemetery? the Vermilion Station. Ah, it's down here. Okay. So, actually... Like this. Haha. -ha. Speaking of shops scaling with you, I wonder if there's anything good in here. Oh, see, look at this. Clarington rifles, auto-loading chambers, fancy pistols. They're starting to sell way better stuff. A shotgun. That was added by the mod, I think. I'm pretty sure that that's not in the base game. Rusted rifle. What do you got over here? We got a flumberge. Quantum's not that one, though. Bronzed plate. Arrows. Okay. Nothing we need. That's fine. There are a bunch of quests here in Tarant that we still have not done. And that's probably going to be a whole stream. Like, not today. Um... 
but... Hello there. Greetings, Sam. Might I ask who you are? Of course, I am Paramount Smythe, recent graduate of the College of Phantasm, a representative from Tula City of Mages. Very nice to make your acquaintance, madam. Ooh, the city of... or the College of Phantasm, you say? You must know the invisibility spell. Yours as well, sir. Have you a moment? Certainly. And what brings you to Tarant, Paramount? Oh, nothing in particular, really. Just traveling and whatnot. I hadn't really seen anything beyond the walls of Tula before a few weeks ago. You might say I've lived quite a sheltered life. Interesting. Tell me of Tula. What is it like? Tula? Oh, it's absolutely breathtaking. It's located deep within the oasis of mist hidden for centuries from the outside world. The black, windowless tower of Simeon Tor encircled by the stone mansions of the Master Mages, where they practice the oldest and most powerful magics. In the middle of the Great Courtyard is Pelogian's Pool, where it's said that the spirit of the Great Conjurer still comes to watch over the apprentices. And in the early evening, as the sun sets over the Vendigroth Wastes, you can hear the haunting harmony of the Soul Singers as they weave melodies with their otherworldly counterparts. Hmm. And where is Tula, Paradin? Oh, Tula? <laughs> Sorry, my friend, I'm under oath to never reveal that secret. Uh-huh, well... Why did you leave in the first place? Oh, I was sent to Toronto on a... How would one phrase it? A mission, I suppose you could call it. A Master Simeon felt I was best qualified for the job, and so to Toronto I went. And I've just spent two weeks with Mr. Willisby recovering from my mission. Quite an adventure, I must say. I can only imagine. Who is this Master Simeon? Master Simeon Tor? He's the greatest mage in all of Arcanum. As leader of the Tula Assembly, it is his responsibility to oversee all that happens within the walls of Tula, and much of what happens without. He's a hard man, but fair and extremely powerful. He's master in the College of Summoning and learned in many others as well. And... Uh, right, we did that. What happened? Well... Here's a newspaper describing what happened as a result of the whole affair. I'd rather not get into the whole story, but I have been approached by a gentleman who seems very interested in writing a short book about what happened. A Sir Chadwick Moore, or some such. A rather bothersome fellow, but he seemed rather insistent. Chadwick Moore is the famous adventurer. We've heard about him several times. Here we go. Train wreck at Vermilion Station. Friday evening, the Brackenton line was derailed by magical influences, injuring a numerous, uh, numerous bystanders and passengers. The incident followed an attack on Councilman Edward Willisby and Tulan Mage Perriman Smythe by local bandits. Smythe's retaliation led to the train wreck. Ooh. Later that evening, Willisby and Smythe were accosted once again at the Willisby Mansion. Intervention by Smythe and an unidentified gentleman led to the arrest of multiple individuals, one of them a powerful mage. Willisby was uncharacteristically closed-mouthed about the affair. This was a private affair and has been dealt with in that manner, Smythe said. And he might spend some more time in the city, but... Or, Smythe said he might spend some more time in the city, but plans to avoid Vermilion Station. Said Smythe, dreadful affair, I'd rather forget the whole thing. Hmm... Hmm. Yeah, I'll get rich selling penny dreadfuls. Enough weird stuff happens, there's plenty of material. Sim <laughs> Close enough. Ah, here we go. First try. There he is. Hmm. The lock on this door is missing. It appears as if it was recently pried open. Hmm. You don't say. The cover of this matchbook reads, Visit the Wellington, the finest gentleman's club in all of Toronto, located at 77 Vermilion Road. A clue to a quest we don't have, actually, but I'll hang on to that. Does this guard have anything to say? Talk to me. Okay, no. 
Uh, here's always a man who died. Nobody mourned. Nobody cried. How he lived, how he fared, nobody knows. Nobody cared. Poems and epitaphs are but stuff. Here lies Zed Blacksword. That's enough. These are funny. These are always funny in every game. Here lies remains of Michelle Gardner, a rogue he was, such was his essence, but death he couldn't cheat no matter how he tried, be merciful for him and let him fly. Here lies old Nick Milligan, gone forever to his namesake. Nothing. It was just blank. This spot is the sweetest I've seen in my life, for it raises my flowers and covers my wife. Dang. Roasted. Here lies John Bradley. The gates of hell opened in front of this bloke. Just wished to die young. Desire smarter. Here lies my love. Here lies my heart. Here lies Jay Garrick. He was the fastest runner for glory, but not faster than a bullet. Quoth the raven nevermore. Yes. <laughs> Breath of Death 7 is such a good game. Uh, let's see. Pedlone Residence. There's that guy. Uh, it said the, the Tarant stuff is going to be a whole episode by itself, but not today. I must have been wrong. Maybe it is one of these red brick buildings. Oh. Oh no, oh, have I walked into this? Right. Oh. No time to talk, madam. We have a problem on our hands. Labor agitators, you understand. And what do they want? The orcs are striking for a union again. Won't they ever learn? That's no excuse for a lack of manners now, is it? I'm Captain Wheeler of the Tarangian Guard. Uh, Dr. B. Ani Esquire, may I ask what you intend to do here? If I were certain it were possible to do so without the loss of any of my men, I'd raid the factory and kill them all. Damned orcs. Huh. They are simply reacting to their deplorable work conditions. Watch that causes him to cost you ten reaction. Oh, I see. One of those, are you? I don't have any time for you orc sympathizers. Perhaps you'd like to go commiserate with the honorable Mr. Babcock over there. He's the one spouting nonsense to my guards. Then why would you suggest that? You sound like him. He's always going on about respect for all races. Bollocks. All these bloody orcs understand is violence. You might remember we found a book called The Orcish Question. Yeah, like, it's a problem. Huh. Perhaps I should speak with him then. Good day. Uh, let's see, this one... There we go. It's the gnome. Captain Wheeler told me to come speak with you. And why did he tell you that? I was defending the rights of the orcs. He was not amused. Ha! Huh. I'm sure he wasn't. He believes the orcs aren't fit to live, let alone have any rights. That's what all this is about. All the orcs want is the right to unionize. I'm trying to keep this from deteriorating into, well, into what happened last time. What happened last time? It was a massacre. Captain Wheeler mowed the protesters down with a mechanized gun. It was horrible. I suppose that's why they chose to hold up inside a factory this time instead of protesting in the open. For Wheeler to get inside, he'd have to sacrifice some men, and that would look bad for him. What happened to Wheeler after killing those protesters? Nothing. Some of the council actually wanted to give him a medal. That's shocking. Yes, it is. And what's more, I feel it's directly responsible for the situation that's arisen here today. Now, why is that? The orcs feel they have to do things like this to draw attention to their plight. They feel they cannot affect any change through political ends when they're seen as expendable beasts. It's all the more pity, as Mr. Throg could be just the man we're looking for. And Mr. Throg? Don Throg is the leader of the orcs. Because he has human blood, we can make a case for his rights to unionize before the Council. There's never been a case to determine the rights of a half-orc under the law. If a half-orc can pass for human, they usually keep their heads down so that others won't think of them as orcs. And if they look like orcs, well... I see. 
So Mr. Throg appears to be human. He is unique in that his features have a distinctive orcish cast to them, but instead of making him look the dumb brute, it actually gives him somewhat the appearance of a swarthy rogue. And I've never met a half-orc with the charisma he has, or near anyone else for that matter. So what can be done to defuse this situation? Don Throg must be convinced to give up this foolishness and work with us. This way he has chosen leads to death. Captain Wheeler will not let him leave that building alive if given the choice, so the choice must not be his to make. Mr. Throg needs to slip out in the night to be certain he may live to fight another day. Well, why don't you go in there and propose your plan to him? Because, as a council member, I represent the establishment which is holding him down. He will not speak with me. An outsider such as yourself, however, could gain his ear. All right, what do I need to do? Simply go in there and propose my plan to him. I'm certain he'll listen to reason. They've locked themselves inside, but I convinced the owner to give me the key. Yep. So, another new quest. See, there's so much going on in Durant. That should have gone, yeah, directly on our key ring. Good. We'll come back to that. Man, I really thought it was right here. Why can I not find it? Oh my... <laughs> well... Okay. Mm. Right. It is in the city hall. That makes sense. It's just downstairs. Okay, well. Oh my goodness gracious. Leave that alone. No. No, I shan't. Quick. Hurry. Damn it. Sog, you are in the way, damn you. for him to go back in the other room. He walks a beat, so... Yeah, go on. Well, do it, Virgil. He just needed room. Did he jam it? No. Come on, Virgil, you've been doing so well this time. Nope, he did jam it. I believe in you. I know you got this. Hey! Ah, <laughs> look at that. And the great thing is, for the most part, once you pick a lock and you are in a place you're not supposed to be, uh, people don't care that you are, in fact, there. They get really upset if they see you, like, picking the lock. They don't like that. But once you're in the room, they kind of stop caring. Is there anything else, or is it just... Oh, right, there's the barrel as well. Okay. Okay. What is in this one? Come on, Virgil. There we go. 210 gold. We love that for us. Now, more importantly, 
Oh, he jammed it on the first go. Sorry, I was immediately distracted by treasure the instant we got down here. Hey! There we go, and another 178 gold. It's actually not really that much, but... It's the Tarantian government, so, like, fuck them. Alright, here we go. So this is also uh, involved in the P. Schuyler and Sons quest. This is one of the places that you can come, um, and you can... Uh, depending on how you're solving that quest, you can look up um, like the information on that piece of paper that we got from their records that Virgil has to find out where the ring came from or who, like, who commissioned it. Greetings, madam. May I be of service to you? What manner of place is this, pray tell? This great place is known as the Hall of Records. All manner of knowledge is kept upon these premises. It is here that all of our census records are kept, as well as tome upon tome of archives. Hmm. Well, can you tell me how many years of census has been kept? It is an unfortunate circumstance that an accurate census of the civilized continent has only been kept for the last 20 years. However, it should be noted for Tarant, we have records dating back as much as 200 years. Hmm. What do you mean by civilized? A census records are kept exclusively for the cities in larger kingdoms. As of this day, no one has endeavored to take a census of the fringe, that being the like of elven villages, orcish hordes, and outlying halfling villages. Hmm. What type of information do the archives contain? Now, the archives contain profuse amounts of information. Most of it exists in the form of deeds and other legal papers, but there are also newspapers. It's a most exciting endeavor we overtook. We've been archiving every newspaper for the last 120 years. They've turned out to be an exceptional resource for research on many subjects, as the newspapers contain such a myriad of information. Everything from attention-grabbing headlines to obituaries from the past 120 years are stored in our archives. Hmm. Amazing! Your storage requirements must be immense! And not as much as one might think. Before the automated printing press came into being 30 years ago, newspapers were only created every month or two. Hmm. Are you able to help me locate an individual? And may I have the individual's name? There you go. See, this is where there can be other people, depending on what names you have and what quests you've got, so that you have a reason to ask about it. Uh, Renford A. Terwilliger. My apologies, madam. There does not seem to be an individual by that name in Toronto. It would it be possible to check the records further back? Yes, madam. How far do you wish to inquire? Hmm. Well, it was a very long time ago. Let's start with 100 to 200. Hmm. Can you search some other dates? Here we go. 50 to 100 years ago. Oh, good news, madam. Renford A. Terwilliger, human, born and known, died 1804, here in Toronto. Well, this would explain why we were unable to locate him living in Toronto. And do you wish me to retrieve his obituary? Yes, please. Aha! Ah, oh, yes, here we are. Um, uh, 5 1804 Renford A. Terwilliger, author of Tsenang, Horror Among the Dark Elves, was found dead in his home today. His death appears to have occurred amongst mysterious circumstances. Uh, the authorities are calling for further investigation. Oh my, what a dreadful incident. Hmm. Are there any books in your archives? If it is books you're in search of, you should view the Library of Tarant. They have an extensive collection. Indeed. When in doubt, go to the library. Especially when it is right next door. We have already purchased a membership. So we have a premium pro pass to go backstage at the library. <laughs> To Sen Ang, Horror Among the Dark Elves. And you have it. Mm -hmm. Sounds spooky. 
Does the library have it? Do you know who the author would be? Renford A. Terwilliger. Wait a moment, I'll go look. I'm sorry, madam, I was not able to find Tsenang Horror Among the Dark Elves. However, I did find another book that may be of interest to you. What book would that be? And the book is titled Curse of Tsenang. It appears to be a book about the one you're searching for. Sounds interesting. May I check it out? Yes, of course, madam. Here we go. By Kendrick Wales. In the following pages, I, Kendrick Wales, will attempt to explain in the plainest words possible the mysteries surrounding Renford A. Terwilliger and his controversial work known as Horror Among the Dark Elves. Many of the stories I will present to you are both strange and frightening, but I give you my word as an author and a scholar that they are the truth. Decide yourself after the facts are presented whether or not you dare to believe them. No, there are multiple story buildings here in Toronto. A lot of them are single story, though, because I think that was a limitation of the engine. So. Um, or maybe it was a graphical limitation of computers at the time. You know, like it would have been harder to do two stories. Renford A. Terwilliger was born in 1750. His fabled trip to the Glimmering Forest was made in 1768, so he was only 18 at the time. He was indeed, as per his book, accompanied by an elven tracker named Jaren Banal. Records housed within the Tarantian Zoological Society validate this fact. Mr. Banal was never heard from nor seen again after the expedition. As for Mr. Terwilliger's account of his adventures in the elven city of Kintara, or his supposed discovery of the mythical Tessanang, no one can be sure. Most scholars and collectors of literature assume that Mr. Terwilliger's book is a work of fiction, and, as such fantastical literature was all the rage at that time, I might be inclined to agree. Yet, one must only look upon the events following the publication of Horror Among the Dark Elves to see that he very well may have found something deep within the glimmering that was never ever meant to be found. There were very few copies of the book ever published. Records concerning the initial print run are scarce, but it is believed that no more than 100 were ever released to the public. Four days after the book was shipped to Tarantian bookstores, the factory that printed it was burned to the ground. The owner, a Mr. Jeremiah Gomez, was found in his home, brutally murdered by an unknown assailant. The four bookstores that had purchased the volume for sale in Tarrant suffered the same fate. Only fifteen copies of the book were sold before the final store was destroyed. Those fifteen copies became an immediate collector's item. Enormous sums of money were paid for the remaining volumes. After a few months, the books had fallen into various respected collections across Arcanum. Each and every one of the owners of the books began to complain of strange happenings once the book was in their possession. All of them told of frightening noises and visions, shadowy figures following them wherever they went, unexplained illnesses, and untimely deaths. Many attributed this to paranoia, a trite brand of sensationalism to create an even greater demand for the book. Unfortunately, their fears were all too justified. All of them were dead within five years of the initial publication, their volumes either stolen, burned, or disfigured beyond recognition. Indeed, they had suffered what came to be known as the Curse of Tsenang. Mr. Terwilliger, strangely enough, lived a relatively long life, cursed in his own way to witness the evil fruits of his labors. He saw himself as the cause of these horrors, and wrote extensively of it within his memoirs. The following is an excerpt from them, only days before he died in his sleep. I will never forgive myself for what I have unleashed upon the world. Had I the courage, I would again travel to the glimmering forest and unleash holy vengeance upon those evil creatures that have plagued our fair land and its peoples. Alas, I no longer have the strength nor the power, and now there is only my own end that I pray for every day. 
Until just a few short months ago, it was thought that there were no remaining copies of horror among the Dark Elves. After an exhaustive investigation, I have found that this is not at all the case. The last known copy of the book, owned by the famed book collector Mr. Philip Misk, was thought to have perished with its owner in a fire almost fifty years ago. Now, with new evidence presented by a reliable source, I have discovered that Mr. Misk's son, Victor Misk of Caledon, still has the copy in his possession and is hiding it for fear that the curse will again visit his family. I pray that the evil let loose in the glimmering forest has finally been put to rest. And I pray Mr. Misk and his family avoid the fate that has befallen every other soul who has challenged the curse of Tsen Ang. Uh, right, so... So many notes. Okay, so Victor Misk in Caledon. What is it that you want of me? Now, let's see. What in the... What in the world? Why did you do that? He equipped the emerald necklace instead of this one. I guess because it's technically hexed. But still, it's better on than off. It doesn't matter what your reaction modifier is, my guy. Okay. So, we have our next goal. With that in mind, uh, we've got to find this book. So it seems like it is in Caledon, yes? Do, 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 do. This way. Got to get out of the city. Actually, you know what? Before we leave, um, I... I'm going to look up, where can I sell all of these damn gemstones? Might have to go to the junk monger. I don't want to do that, though. Do, do, do. We have enough money that it doesn't really make a lot of difference. But. Do, 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 do. Okay, now. Um I know if nothing else that Lloyd over in Shrouded Hills, um gives us a really good price for a lot of stuff, and he buys things that other people don't, necessarily. Hmm. I... I think... That's probably, that's probably the best thing to do. That works actually because 
we also have that robe to sell. And you know what? Something else, actually. We sold him a bow that we got last time, and he should still have it. And I'm not sure that maybe we might want it back. We'll find out here very shortly. Let's ask. Okay. Make sure he's still got it down here. Huh, he doesn't. There's the chill shield. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Maybe we didn't sell it to him. We might have sold it to the identification lady. Okay. He will buy those, so. What is it that you want of me? Alright. Keep Diamond Cathorn Crystal. That. Okay. Will you buy all of these? Yes, good. Okay. Oh, okay, you won't buy the geodes. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Shit. Shit. Oops. <laughs> Don't want to sell that. Should have known it's the only purple one. There we go. That's okay. What is it that you want of me? I'll eat that because that was my own dumb fault. Someone else might theoretically give us more money for it. Junk mongers usually give you less, even though they buy everything. What is it that you want of me? But right now, my main concern is just that we get rid of this stuff. There we go. Got our coin. He's got two magic rings. Okay, good. That should be it. There we go. Excellent. What is it that you want of me? Now this also means I think we can give him that. And oh, he wants to use the axe. No, you don't have the strength skill for it. Goodness gracious. Really? You know what? Here, hold this poison wine glass. You can't do anything with that. Who's got our magnesium? Oh, I think it's Magnus. Well, no big deal either way. Okay. There, that gives us some room. Now we can head over. Nya. Get her to identify these robes. And then she will buy them. Shadow robes. There we go. Okay, well, I don't know where we put that bow, but I think it's fine because the one that we have is um, probably better overall anyway. Okay, um, shouldn't be anything else to do here. Okay, now this is where I'm going to kind of leave it open to y'all. Actually, still plenty of places we have not gone, of course, that we can, um, you know, that we can explore. 
Uh, we've done pretty much everywhere in Morbahan, I think. And while I am speaking, actually, I'm going to go over here to Cree because we should be able to handle that now and that will be a bunch of XP. But uh, do we want to go on to Caledon and press the main story and explore somewhere new? Or would you like to spend some more time in Tarant and clean that up, do all of those side quests where, you know, like I just said a moment ago, um, you know, it's probably going to take basically a whole stream. But we have also been picking quests up on the way as we go. So you can see that there is plenty to do. We have a load of quests. We could get the rewards and the XP for that, of course. And then we won't have to worry as much about um, Tarant and what's going on. More shadowing robes. Yeah, we don't need to carry that around. So I will let y'all pick. I'm going to go over here and do this while you decide. Oh. Did I just pick it? Oh, I don't need that. Clicked on it by accident. Mountain lions. I feel terrible about killing all of these random animals, but they did start it. They do be starting it, though. Um, so these are probably... Oh, they are. Good. Wear rats. They're level 25, which is not much of a threat to us, but... It's plenty of XP. Oh, well, almost got two of them. I was hoping for a crit. <laughs> you know, that's an excellent point. <laughs> uh, I think if you don't, uh, if you don't Skyrim around a little bit, what are you even doing? Quite frankly. They put all these side quests in the game for you to do them. It would be rude not to. Am I right? We're about to level up again as well, which is nice. Seventeen, right? Okay, forty-two. So that would be eighteen intelligence. Forty-three would be nineteen. Forty-four would be twenty. And then at forty-five, we will get two points, which we can dump into technological schematics. Ah, uh, remember when these guys felt like a threat. Honestly, yeah. If I'm not way over leveled, then like, what am I even doing? Barbarian's heavy blade. It's not better than what he's got, I don't think. Horned helmet, though. That's actually really good. It's one of the few helmets that doesn't give you a perception penalty. Look at that. It's AC 10 and damage reduction 10. No perception penalty. That's 8 to 20 and 6 to 12. That's not... Virgil, no. Let's see. I'm trying to remember who's got a magic helmet. There. Boot upgrade for our good doctor. 
guys are very dodgy. Okay, let's see. Here. What is it that you want of me? Okay, now you've got this. So it's AC fifteen, damage reduction five plus twenty percent, and crits and so. Honestly, this is probably an upgrade. Now. See, what have you got? A helm of light, AC three damage redu uh, reduction seven, and it creates light, but it also gives you minus one perception. So let's say probably that's an upgrade for him too overall. He doesn't seem to think so, but how can I help you? Perception says otherwise. Okay, and the same thing for him. Okay, so it actually is an upgrade for everybody, How basically. For Magnus as well. There. He <laughs> put on the glasses. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, that's good though. I think it comes down to, you know, it's a game. Oh. Should have seen that coming. Make sure I did just quick save. Yes, okay. Not at full health, so... Well, that works, I guess. We'll let them handle this one. There we go. Got that good, good doggo dodge. There we go. Oops. Any money? No. Yeah, exactly. There's no wrong way to play. The, the only wrong way to play a game, I think, is to make someone else have less fun playing it. I wonder if that's the same helmet. He keeps picking up tobacco and, and coca leaves. It's a very specific kind of like, hmm. There we go. There's some more of them. Yeah, talking is playing the game. If you don't enjoy talking and story and stuff, then like, why are you playing an RPG, frankly? Is my question. Get them. Get, no, get that one. Why did you run past? <laughs> Prioritizing my target, I guess. Ooh. Actually hit his armor. Got him. I have to remember to get that uh, repaired. So, there's a... Uh, kind of a minor quest here where you can get there's an idol and it's not something we need to worry about or fool with um, and you can get a fate point for sneaking through all of these barbarians and stealing the idol without killing anyone on this map and that's great we do love fate points but I am way more concerned about the uh, experience points There we go. Nice. 
nice. So yeah, that's that's what we're here for today. There we go. She had to climb in and out of a window to look cool. This is required. Virgil just walks casually over. Poor Magnus, he's so useless. Except as a backpack. I feel bad for him, but his strength score is increasing, so... He won't be like that forever. See, we're about to level up. Broadsword, bullets... Ooh, healing items. Take those. We've got plenty of fatigue restorers, so we'll use those on Virgil, and that's actually going to be better than... than just healing. So he'd rather heal himself, and I would rather he heal himself too. <laughs> it's the wrong kind of fate. Or rather, I should say, not wrong at all, but uh, not the one we're talking about, unfortunately. Oh, hun, no. Don't worry about that. Packaged components, quinine, pocket watch parts, copper ring, aqua vitae. I don't think any of that's really necessary. See, the idol is like up here. It's it's fine, Virgil. There. Are, does that make you happier? There, I'll use the three medicine that I got. Thank you. There we go. Gotta heal our doggo. Oh, Magnus got a hit in. You'd love to see it. This way. Oh, whatever. It's like a stun trap. I like that animation, though. Great fatigue restore. Oh, those might be ropes of healing, maybe. I'm not sure. And everything on this side. I'm really surprised we haven't leveled up yet. Considering that all of these dudes are like level 25. So I mean, like, that's not the highest level enemies we have fought, but that's also not nothing. Giant stone skull... These statues are having a great time. Look at that. Okay. We need to not pull all of these in one big group. Oop. Swing and a miss. Nice. Whoa, that was a lot of dodges. Especially against our doggo, too. Buck wild. Oh. 
Come on, Verge. What is it that you want of me? Actually, here. You take that. Okay, there's another one roaming around. Is that? Oh, it's the torch. The idols over here, I think, or this the altar, anyway. They got a couple good hits on him, so he was softened up for us. Is there anyone else? Right here is the, uh, there you go. That's the idol. The golden idol of Cree. I can't remember if we actually have the quest for that or not. Do we? No, we do not. Well, if we decide to do it, it'll be a lot easier. Oh no! Don't don't do that. Sorry, I still didn't get all Please of them. Watch yourself, madam. Being hit inadvertently hurts as much as being struck purposely. Yes. I realize that, Virgil, and I'm sorry. I don't know how I'm missing, frankly. Are we hitting the damn dog? I ask you. At least his attitude never changes, thankfully. Support build! Haha! <laughs> There's just two left. Can I get one of them? No, I didn't think so. There's one down. Ooh, that was close. Sorry about that. Oh, there's one left. Well, dang it. There we go, come on. Oh my god. Fucking lol. Please note that, uh, when we go to hit them. That we have... Oops, see, look at these ridiculous numbers, like 135% chance to hit. So you find yourself being like, okay, how are we missing then? How's that happening? We are, wow, it's not letting us move. It's just eating my action points. Did you see that? Without actually letting me move. There we go. That's better. Okay. Ruby, emerald necklace, greater healing. I will wait to give that healing potion to Virgil until after he has healed himself. Otherwise... Can't rest here? Oh, okay. Otherwise, he'll just use it now. Wow, we really didn't level up from that. I thought we would.
It's funny to think of this army of barbarians as like, well, they're only level 25. Oh, Lord. Woken up by wild dogs. <laughs> There's the level. Oh, my goodness. There it is. <laughs> That's so funny. From that level one wolf. That's how little we needed. Hilarious. Ooh, more XP. That's the way to show those bastards. I, I mean, good hit, madam. There what is it that you want of me? Now you can have that. Okay, good. Also... Do this. Drop all that, because we do not need it at the moment. There we go. Okay, um, back this way, I guess. Oh my goodness. All right, well, we know that these guys are not a problem, so. I mean, good hit, Oh, there's one more. There, now we can leave. So, since that seems to be kind of the consensus, um, I think that what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to Tarant. Um, and we will spend the next stream pursuing all of those side quests and cleaning them up. So they'll be worth a lot of XP. There's a lot of rewards behind them. Plus, I'll just feel better having them out of the way, and I'm sure that y'all will too. And actually, let me... Let's go back to Shrouded Hill so we can identify those robes and things and sell them. Lloyd gives us really good prices. So yeah. I think that'll make a good next stream. That gives us a clear goal. And it means that I can take the intervening time to uh, like make a list of the side quests that are available in Tarant at this point in the game because I really don't want to miss one. Oh my gosh. Bro, you're level 5. You don't even have magic items. <laughs> so yeah, we'll inch our way over there and then come back to Tarant. I'll have that list, and we will clear everything in the city, probably level up again because, I mean, look, we're already a third of the way. That's not bad. It's silly that we killed all those level 25 barbarians and, like, this was as far as we got, but that still is not bad. So, I'll identify this stuff. I will sell everything. We will head back to Toronto, and that's what we will do next Saturday when I return with more Arcanum at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, which is New York and Miami time here in the U.S. Like I said, I think that gives us a clear goal. We know what we're doing. And it'll be fun, too. Some of those quests have a lot of depth, and now we're to the point in the game where, like, the Dawn Throg quest, has, uh, quest line has triggered, and with that being available to us, like, there's a lot going on there. That one's one of my favorites, for a number of reasons. Ooh, a magic traveler's cloak. Hmm. Looks cool, but... Ooh, magic helmet. It might actually be an upgrade back the other way. It's, it's this, but not hexed. See? <laughs> uh, so I'll be back on Monday with Specific Pixel. Um, he will be playing more of Baroque for y'all. 
and then Thursday, I'll have more Pokemon Crystal for you. I hope y'all are enjoying that challenge run, because I certainly am. It's been a lot of fun so far. Next Saturday, of course, more Arcanum. And... There we go. I think that's everything. And then the following Monday, which is going to be the 15th, uh, I'll have more Wasteland 2. So, yeah. What is it that you Dig want in. Me? Come back if you had fun. Subscribe. Follow. Leave a comment. Join our Patreon. Blah, blah, blah. If you had a good time. I certainly hope that you did. I am grateful for your time. Thank you for spending it with me. And I will catch y'all in the next one. And uh, until then, as always, thanks for playing. Give, give me... Give me the hat. There. I just want to give you a better helmet.